Have you ever imagined transforming an ordinary material into something so valuable that it could yield thousands of dollars? What if I told you that this opportunity has always been right before our eyes, but almost no one has seen it? Today, you're going to watch one of the most unexpected, enigmatic, and at the same time promising combinations ever tested here on the channel. A mixture so intriguing that major industries avoid talking about it. A formula that, if it works, could completely change the way we think about construction, strength, and even materials technology. First of all, let's start with the exact base of this secret formula. Here on my workbench, I have four kilos of fine sifted sand, four kilos of common cement. And one ingredient that almost no one uses in this type of experiment, but that makes all the difference, chopped fiberglass. To ensure absolute precision, I weighed 30 grams of fiberglass per gram using a digital scale. It may seem excessive, but when we're testing something of this level, margin of error is not an option. Now let's begin the first step, the dry mix. I pour the already sifted fine sand into a large container, not just any bucket, but one where I can move the material easily and without loss. Next, I add the cement. This material has a very specific purpose, and I'll explain why later in the video, because understanding this at the right time completely changes the perception of this formula. Now, with everything inside the container, I begin mixing manually. No machine, no industrial equipment, no complicated technique, just the combination of consistent movements and attention to detail. Leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. Write your city and country. It's fascinating to see how far this content can reach, to discover who's part of this huge community. And it inspires me to produce videos that are increasingly tailored for you, wherever you are in the world. Fiberglass, when mixed while still dry, distributes better throughout the mix. This creates a structural balance like a microscopic network that connects the entire composition. This process ensures that nothing is concentrated in a single point. Everything remains uniform. Now we arrive at one of the most critical parts of this experiment. Here in my hand is a discrete but extremely powerful element, the plasticizing additive. This product is essential because it improves workability, reduces bubbles, and makes the mixture much more uniform and controlled. The quantity, approximately 50 milliliters. But be careful, it is never added directly to the mixture. The correct method, and this detail is ignored by many people, is to dilute the additive in water beforehand. This step is mandatory, because when the additive is combined with water first, the distribution in the mixture is much more efficient, preventing gaps, separations, or weak zones. Now that our mixture is ready, it's time to prepare the surface that will receive this material. And this step seems too simple to be so important. But this is where many people go wrong. In front of me, I have a specific plastic mold to produce a cement tub. And before placing any material inside it, there is an indispensable procedure. I apply a thin layer of cooking oil to the entire inside of the mold. Yes, regular oil. This simple detail does two essential things. One, it facilitates the removal of the concrete after curing. Two, it prevents cracks, breaks, and damage during demolding. You can use other products instead of oil, used motor oil, olive oil, or any other release agent. But the important thing here is not the type of product. It's not skipping this step. With the mold prepared, I begin filling it using the special concrete we prepared earlier. With each portion applied, it's important to gently tap the mold. But why? Because these taps expel the air trapped inside the mixture. And trapped air creates bubbles, flaws, and open pores. This not only makes the finish worse, but also reduces the final strength of the piece. Here, calmness and repetition are more important than force. After filling the entire mold, the material needs to rest. For this type of formulation, 
The minimum initial curing time is 24 hours. And right after those first 24 hours, we arrive at the moment of truth. Now I begin to remove the mold slowly, without rushing. And it is at this moment that you realize the importance of the oil applied at the beginning. The piece comes off much more easily, without excessive effort, without fractures, without chipping. But it's not ready yet. The concrete still has traces of oil on the surface, and that interferes with the next steps. So now I'm doing a light sanding using 220 grit sandpaper. This sandpaper has two functions. Completely remove oil from the surface, create a micro abrasive texture so that the next step has perfect adhesion. After sanding, I leave the sink completely submerged in water for 24 hours. This process is called wet curing, and it increases the concrete's strength. It's a common technique in professional construction, but almost no one applies it to DIY projects. After removing it from the water, the piece needs more time. 48 hours of rest. Now the concrete is more stable, harder, and better prepared to continue the transformation. But when I observe the surface, there are still small defects, micropores, flaws, imperfections. And this is where a crucial step begins. In my hand, I have acrylic filler, and perhaps looking at it like this, it seems like just an ordinary product. But here, it takes on a much bigger role than just patching holes. This filler is responsible for correcting all imperfections, closing microscopic pores and leveling areas where the concrete wasn't perfectly uniform. I start by applying acrylic filler to the entire sink, inside and out. But understand one thing, the acrylic filler here isn't just a finish. It's the primer between the concrete and the next material we'll use later, a material that doesn't adhere well to unprepared porous surfaces. I apply three coats, and between each coat, the ideal drying time is two to three hours, depends on the temperature and humidity of your region. Application can be done with steel spatula, silicone spatula, the important thing is to maintain uniform movements, covering imperfections without excess. After the third coat, the material needs to rest for eight hours. This time ensures complete drying and stability for sanding. Now comes the moment that transforms something amateur into something professional. I start by sanding with 320 grit sandpaper. The goal here isn't to remove filler, but rather to correct micro irregularities, light movements, no rush, no pressure. It's almost like polishing glass. Patience makes all the difference. If you prefer, you can start sanding with 180 or 220 grit sandpaper. Work lightly, just leveling the surface without removing the acrylic filler or causing marks. Then, finish with 320 or even 400 grit sandpaper to leave a more refined, smooth, and professional finish. After the 320 grit sandpaper, I finish with 400 grit sandpaper, which leaves the piece smooth, soft to the touch, and visually flawless. Now, the surface begins to reveal the potential of this piece. After sanding, I remove all the dust using a damp cloth, leaving no residue, no rush. Because now, the concrete is prepared, the surface is sealed, the finish is smooth. Now let's move on to another important step, making the piece more waterproof. This liquid will create an extra layer of protection, helping to strengthen the surface and prevent seepage. I'm going to separate approximately 70 milliliters of the product and apply it directly to the piece.
The application can be done with a regular brush, but if you want to speed up the process, you can also use a wool roller. The important thing is to spread it evenly, covering the entire surface without leaving any excess buildup. For this project, a single coat is sufficient. After application, the piece needs to rest for 24 hours, which is the ideal drying time before moving on to the next step. After 24 hours, the piece is dry to the touch, firm, and ready to receive the next material, the epoxy resin. I've already prepared everything here. I have on my workbench, Component A, base resin, component B, hardener. To measure both accurately, I will use a graduated syringe, because with this type of material, the correct proportion makes all the difference in the final result. This resin is thin, and the recommended proportion is 30% hardener for each part of component A. So, for this project, I will measure 50 ml of component A, 15 ml of component B, Now comes a step that cannot be skipped, mixing for at least 20 minutes. This step ensures that the hardener and resin fully integrate. If you mix too quickly or for too short a time, the product may become sticky, have curing defects, or uneven patches. Slow movements are better because they prevent the formation of bubbles. After this initial mixing, I will further improve the formulation. I will add a small amount of pearl white paste pigment. The amount is minimal, a single drop is enough to transform the resin's appearance. Once the pigment is incorporated, I mix again for another 20 minutes. In total, the mixing time reaches approximately 40 minutes, and this is what guarantees a resin. Homogeneous, stable, slightly thick, and with a milky appearance. With the resin ready, I can now apply it. I'll use a soft bristled brush, the kind used for varnish. The application needs to be continuous and even, always following the shape of the piece and avoiding leaving marks or uncovered areas. Right from the first moments, you can already see the difference. The shine appears immediately, the color changes, and the surface begins to take on a more refined look, almost like porcelain. When the preparation has been done correctly, sanding, sealing, and the exact resin ratio, one coat is sufficient. There is no need to apply additional layers. The resin adheres very well to the smooth surface and creates a resistant and well-distributed film. From here on, the process depends only on time for healing. And after that period, the final result begins to appear. But that part, I'll only show in the next step. Now I'm going to use the remaining resin in the container and turn it into a unique visual detail. For this final finish, I'll add a small amount of black paste pigment. When the pigment comes into contact with the already pearl white pigmented resin, the color begins to change rapidly, creating an elegant and uniform gray tone. It's a quick transformation. The final shade appears in just a few seconds. With the color ready, I'll apply it in a controlled manner. Using a spoon, I'll let small drops fall exactly on the edge of the sink. The idea is to allow these drops to run naturally, both to the inside and outside of the surface. This process should be done calmly, maintaining alignment and visual balance. Each drop creates a different design, and as the liquid moves, a unique pattern begins to emerge. If you're not already subscribed, now's the time. Subscribe now and stay up to date with all the news and exclusive tips. This way you won't miss any new videos and you'll also support the channel so we can bring you even more quality content. 
click the subscribe button and become part of this community. Now that the entire process is complete, it is necessary to respect the final curing time. The recommendation is to wait seven days before wearing the piece. After seven days, the result is evident. The piece is completely dry, rigid, stable, and the shine speaks for itself. What was once just ordinary concrete has now transformed into something entirely different, a sophisticated modern piece with a finish worthy of a premium product. And the most interesting thing is that this type of work isn't readily available in stores. It's something exclusive, made with precision, patience, and accessible techniques, costing much less than any industrially produced piece with a similar appearance. Beyond the impressive look, all the procedures performed ensured a piece that was waterproof durable with a professional finish and with a unique design. If you like this result and think this idea could inspire others, share this video with friends, family, and groups.